Hi everyone, Christina Werner here with another video for assignmentsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be creating three watercolor cards using Distress Oxide inks. Oxide inks are so fun to work with, especially when it comes to using water because they are so reactive with water. So I'm starting out with some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper and these pieces of watercolor paper are pre-cut to five by seven and then I've taped them down to a hardboard. The first three colors I'm using are Crushed Olive, Mermaid Lagoon, and Seedless Preserves. And these are going to create a really great color palette. So the reason why you want to tape down your watercolor paper to a hard surface is because as you add more moisture and water to your paper, it's going to want to warp. And by taping it down, it holds it flat to the hard surface. So as it dries, it will dry flat. So it gives you a much better card in the long run because your watercolor piece is already flat. So I'm using a number eight Zen watercolor brush for this. And I've just added some water and I'm painting on in just a, kind of a random organic motion. I'm gonna move on to Mermaid Lagoon, and I want these colors to overlap and mix. So I'm purposely going to grab a little more water and more of that crushed olive and overlap the colors even more. I love these two colors, how they create a nice grass green shade when they start to mix. I'm gonna soften that blue edge, and then I'm gonna come in with Seedless Preserves, which adds a kind of a purpley red shade. And when it overlaps with that Mermaid Lagoon, you get a really like more blue violet color. I think it's a really great shade. These three colors in particular create a great rainbow pattern when you use them all together. So you'll notice that as I'm letting this dry or I'm adding more water areas to the watercolor, that I'm gonna get areas where the water is pushing that color away. And you'll notice that mostly in the center area with that Mermaid Lagoon, you're getting kind of a, a darker stripe area of that blue going across. And that's because that water is really pushing that color away from where the water is. I'm gonna use my heat tool and heat set this until it's completely dry. And I'm going to grab this uh, one of the greetings from this stamp set. This is the Handwritten Love stamp set from Simon. And this is the one I'll eventually be stamping on my watercolor background. And But I'm not stamping it yet. I just want it placed there so I have an idea with uh, placement for what I'm working with. So like I mentioned before, Distress Oxide inks are reactive with water. So this piece here is completely dry and I'm using clean, clear water to paint hearts on here. And after I paint them on and let the water kind of sit, when I pick up the water with a paper towel, it's going to almost bleach out the color underneath. And you'll see that here in a minute. It looks really, really cool. It starts to take away all of that color from underneath. And the, the cool effect with this is that you start to get almost like a bokeh effect um, where you have really soft color and then we're gonna have some more stark white hearts in on the final card. So I've, I've got those placements, uh, the placement of the hearts kind of around where that greeting will be. And I'm just gonna clean up this heart right here just to make sure it looks a little more clean. So this is almost uh, where I'm gonna kind of stop this watercolor painting and move on to another background. But I wanna make sure it's completely dry before I move on. I'm also going to clean up my work surface here. So it wipes up really, really clean. I'm using a, a palette from Art Impressions and I'm going to put down just Mermaid Lagoon this time. I'm gonna do a monochromatic card where I'm using all just one color. So that first technique that I showed you was um, using water for um, like the hearts. And now I'm going to make one that's just monochromatic. And I'm going to use this die here from Simon Says Stamp, just getting the placement on that watercolor paper. So I know how large I need my watercolor area to be. So I've added some water and I'm, I've moved to a little bit of a smaller brush. I think this is a size uh, six brush. And I'm putting just down a nice blob of color and then dropping in more intense color in some areas. I've got some chip sapphire here now. But after I added the chip sapphire, I realized I really didn't need it that much. I mostly just needed to work in layers. So I'm drying that entire watercolor piece. 
and then I'm gonna add more of that same color right on top and it's going to intensify the color and give more opportunity for these organic, almost cloud-like edges to all this watercolor. So before I finish off this entire watercolor piece, I'm going to spray water into the palm of my hand and then sprinkle the water over the top. And just like uh, the more controlled water was with that first technique, I'm going to dab up the paint or this ink in this case with a paper towel and it eats away at that color and you get a really cool water droplet effect. I'm gonna spray my hand one more time and flick on some smaller little areas of water. And this is gonna give me a really fun texture. So this is a monochromatic with organic water droplets. And then my third example of some fun watercolor techniques to do with Distress Oxide, I'm actually gonna mix things up and I'm going to have it be multicolor, almost like a rainbow effect. And it's gonna be really, really cool. So I, before I move on, I'm going to heat set this, or not even heat set. You don't need to heat set it per se. You just need to make sure it's dry. So I just sped up the drying process. I'm using a bunch of different colors. I'm using squeezed lemonade, candied apple. Uh, the next one I'm using is picked raspberry, which is my favorite pink to paint with or anything with distress oxides. I, was, I like picked raspberry. I've got some chip sapphire, cracked pistachio. I think I've got a couple more colors in here too that I'll add along the way. This is very similar to the very first technique that I showed you where you're moving from color to color, but making sure the colors overlap and blend with each other. This is going to give me a really seamless background. So like I did with that first uh, background, I'm going to work in layers. So I'm going to bring in some more color. And this time I'm going to use a blueprint sketch to intensify that blue shade and also a little bit of salty ocean. I've got those... Um, other two shades as well, the squeezed lemonade and picked raspberry, just to put more of those colors on top. This is really going to intensify things. And at this point, as I'm adding in that squeezed lemonade, I'm making sure that it overlaps with some of the blues and oranges so that I get a nice transition of color. So I'm added in some more purple. I put in some wilted violet and I'm just spreading out all of that color. So now I'm going to, instead of, um, using the water from my palm, I instead I'm going to sprinkle it on using a paintbrush. And this gives me some more of those organic water droplet textures. And after those have been on the surface for a little bit, I'm going to grab a paper towel and just sop up any of that color. And then I'm left behind with this cool texture. So those are three different ways that you can use water with distressed oxide water coloring um, to get different effects. So I'm going to trim down each one of these watercolor pieces so that they're easier to work with on cards. And this last one is actually going to be on a standard size four and a quarter by five and a half card. So I'm going to place that smaller watercolor piece inside a misty stamp positioning tool. And then I've got that greeting that I used earlier and I placed that over top. I'm going to stamp it in Versamark ink. And this is going to give me a really nice crisp greeting so that I can do some heat embossing. So I'll press that down, get that greeting uh, stamped down really well. And I'm gonna stamp this twice because this watercolor paper is quite textured. So I'll stamp it twice to get a really good impression. And then I'm going to take some white embossing powder. This is alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And I'll sprinkle that on, shake off the excess, and then heat set it with the heat tool until it's smooth and melted. For this other card, I'm using the Stained Glass Love stamp set and the really large word that says friend. And I'm doing the same exact steps. I'm stamping it in Versamark ink, and I'll actually stamp this twice, and then apply some alabaster white embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This one has an additional line of text to go right above the word friend. So I'll stamp that just once so that it's nice and crisp uh, in Versamark ink, and then I'll uh, heat emboss that using white embossing powder as well. So this card is going to be really, really simple. That's the, the main design of the card, and I really love how colorful that is. I'm adhering it down to a black card base. This is some licorice twist cardstock from Basil, and this is a five by seven card. That's the finished size, and I just adhered that with some foam adhesive. For the smaller card, I use some Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and this is a standard size card, like I mentioned before, it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And for the final card, 
I put Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the back, so it's going to be adhered flat, and it's going onto a white card base. This is some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110-pound cardstock. So now I'm going to be adding some die cuts to each of these cards, or actually to just two of them. I've cut out this tulip die, and I've cut it four times out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80-pound cardstock. And I'm adhering them so that they'll, they're stacked all together to create a nice thick die cut. I'm using some Gina K Designs Connect glue and adhering all of these together. And then I'm going to use that same exact glue, dabbing on some dots of glue, and then adhering that over the top of this blue watercolor area. So this card actually doesn't have a greeting on it, which sometimes I like to have uh, cards with no greeting so that I can use it for all sorts of different occasions. I'm going to hold that down so it um, has time to dry and I'm going to put some acrylic blocks on top just so that it holds that die cut directly flush with the watercolor paper and gives it a really good chance of adhering the best it can be. This other card, um, like I mentioned before, I wanted to have sort of a bokeh effect with those faded back hearts, but then also some more bright hearts. So I've used some pre-cut hearts using the Simon Says Stamp Mini Hearts die set. Um, these are just a bunch of hearts I already had die cut, and I'm adhering these with some Gina K Designs Connect glue as well. So this is actually a very flat card, but it has a lot of dimension with the different um, values of those hearts. So those are all three of my cards for today. Hope you guys enjoyed kind of experimenting with some distressed oxide inks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon.